Have you Ooh. had a permani sandwich yet? I'm not eating that thing. <laughs> I'm good. Steeler Nation, we are back with another great season. Man, it is time, the most wonderful time of the year, and it never gets old. I'm Jay York Football. Alongside me, Mike Dub Sports One. And we have a great guest today on the Players Only segment, the sick podcast, Steeler Crazy. But why don't you tell the people, put some money in their pocket, and tell them about the great partnership we have with the people over at DraftKings. Yeah, that's incredibly important, JY, because as you mentioned it, NFL Week 1 is here, and a new season means new ways to get in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. If you're ready to place your first bet, try something simple, like the Steelers, plus three, or money line this mm -hmm. Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons, because they are an underdog heading into that game. Uh, I think that's a, a spread that favors the Steelers. And we'll definitely get some more insight on why they could potentially win with our upcoming guests. But do us a favor, score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet. Touchdowns, player props, game spreads, and more. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use our code 6SPORTS. You see it right there. New customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets when you bet just $5 only. That's it. 6SPORTS, 250 bucks. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas. Mm -hmm. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Listen, bonus bets do expire 168 hours Ooh. after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.com. NFL Plus premium offer available only to new and former mm -hmm. NFL Plus subscribers and additional NFL Plus premium terms at nfl.com slash terms. You got all that? Can you, read, can you read that back to me? I, I, I say we just breath. get to our guest. I got to save some breath for Go our Go ahead. Have a, have, a, uh, have a glass of water as we bring on our next guest. Go ahead. There we go. So that was a cool announcement. We're excited at Akersher Stadium. Because there's going to be a cool announcement all season. I mean, for the first time, you're going to hear starting his safety, number 25, Deshaun Elliott. You're going to hear that at Akershire Stadium on Steelers game day. So let's let's bring him in today to talk a little bit of ball. Deshaun, what is good, my guy? How y'all doing, bro? Good. <laughs> good. Hey, How you doing? Put, you, that you was excited? That thing, you, thing you did, but that was very long. I'm not going to lie. That was... <laughs> I feel bad. I was... <laughs> hey man, we we got to get everything in there. There are some people out there who take it a little over the top when it comes to to sports betting. So we yeah. want people to get involved and grow the NFL, but we also want people to be careful. Fair enough. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Pittsburgh. Welcome to the Steelers. Oh, first of all, you know what this word means yet? Yes, I don't know what it means, but people have been telling me that, right? And I think. I've heard it's like Ginsburg or like, oh, wait, no, it's like, how, how are Yins doing? I think. Mm -hmm. Nice. Like y'all. Right? Like y'all. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Y'all, like right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. You got it. You absolutely nailed it. So that's, all right, <laughs> that's one point uh, for sure. Let, let's talk about it, man. We're, we're all excited to watch you this year. First and foremost, obviously you, you come over, sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers as a free agent. What made you want to be a Steeler, Deshaun? Um, well, that situation was crazy because I was, before I signed here, I was like in bed the night before and Patrick Queen called me. He FaceTimed me. He was playing video games. He was like, you want to be a steward? And I was like, I mean, yeah, I can play with you. He was like, pause, pause. But I was like, yeah, I can play Pittsburgh with you. He was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll, Omar asked about you. I'll get on it. Next morning, uh, I reached out to my agent and was like, Patrick Queen called me last night. I think he was going to uh, do something. So talk to him. Got that done and shoot, it's been we never since. It was more of like, obviously, I played with Patrick for his first years in the league, and I got to watch his growth over time and how great of a player he is uh, and the dog that he is and what he brings to the table. But also just playing with those gold jackets. Like I got a front cam. We just signed a new deal today. Uh, TJ, Alex, another gold jacket. And Alex, who I feel like he's very set up on, is also another dog. And 
Also playing with obviously the best safety in the NFL, <laughs> Mika Fitzpatrick. Uh, being able to be there and help uh, grow, uh, help grow, and um, figure out ways to get Joey to flourish into the player that I know he can be and that everyone expects him to be. And really just the whole defense of the team. That and also having Mike T, the head coach. When you are in the NFL, like he has so much respect around the league. It's just like every player, if a coach, if a player, if we took a poll on what coach players want to go play for, it's Mike T. He's going to win every time. And he kind of like just pushes you, uh, not just on the field, but off the field. Like he really tries to instill the core values that will develop you as a man and develop you as a person. I mean, you know, the type of players he's had here. No matter the, um, no matter where their mental space is, he was able to make sure that everyone was doing this, uh, had, had one singular goal. So that's, that's, man, I'm excited to be here. That's awesome, dude. You and PQ obviously were on the other side of this thing, yeah. Which means, listen, that we understand when you're playing for the Ravens, you don't like the Steelers. When you're playing for the Steelers, you don't like the Ravens. That's the nature of the business when you're rivals. So, how weird is it? I don't know if weird's the right word word, but how you know strange is it now that you're kind of on the other side of this thing? And obviously you're a dolphin, so you're still in between there and, and removed from the Ravens a little bit, but does it still feel a little weird? Um I had a ex-girlfriend, her mother used to they're from Pennsylvania, some part of Pennsylvania, I don't know what part, but <laughs> she would always say, Yeah, one day you're gonna play for the Steelers, and I would not this is when I play for the Ravens. And I was like, I would never wear that, wear those colors, never wear those colors. <laughs> And then I, I leave Baltimore. I leave Baltimore, and I go my other two stops, Detroit and Miami. And I think the, that also like kind of like helped me when it came not only my development, but I got to see the grass is not greener in other divisions. Mm. <laughs> um, and then it's like finally coming here. I mean, it, it's it's different because uh, when I first signed here, I had a lot of my followers are still from Baltimore, and they're just like you, you traitor, you traitor. But also there's other other fans who. Who, who are like, like, you will be a Raven for life. You know, it, it is what it is. It is kind of, it comes with the territory. I feel like for, for PQ, it might be worse. Honestly. <laughs> he, sure. goes, yeah. like, he plays five years there, four years there. He plays four years there and goes straight to freaking uh, Pittsburgh. That that there, that's crazy. He told me that he's had people block him. He's had people like say some crazy things to him before. I'm just like, hey, brother, it comes with the game. Hey, yeah. it, it's not like he went somewhere where it was, Bad football. This is still great freaking football. This is freaking Pittsburgh. What are you talking about? When you think of NFL football, you think of the black and gold. Like, that, why wouldn't you? Like, mm -hmm. come on. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I mean, you just summed up my next question, which was the pride of the city. One of my favorite offseason clips, and it kind of went viral, is you doing an interview and talking about people in the airport wearing black and gold yeah. and black and yellow yeah. and, and going to the strip district <laughs> and being like, all right, do they sell anything else except Steelers gear? Uh, so you probably felt the pride of the city immediately. You, you can't go anywhere else in the country where it's like that, in my opinion. And I've been everywhere. I mean, obviously, San Fran, that they have a great fan base, but not the way the city is set up. The way this city is set up is literally Steeler country. This is its own city. Like if They could name this. They could, they could, this could be Steeler PA, honestly. It's, it's, <laughs> it's basically what the city is. Yeah, facts, facts. That's great to hear, Jordan. So with that being said, it was great getting to, you know, catch up with you up at a uh, training camp. Um, but what can people expect from you every Sunday? What could, you know, a Pittsburgh Steeler fan, they're turning on the game. What are you going to bring? Uh, I'm going to bring energy. I know I'm going to bring uh, my form of leadership, just about leading by example, uh, physicality. Hmm. Uh, you're going to hear me, period, and really make, making plays. Honestly, I've been known as being one of the, Harder hitting safeties in the league. So usually, I these past couple of years I've been getting a lot more fines than usual. But you know, we have Casey here who's also I call him Kamikaze the way he just runs in there and throws his body in there. So yeah. I think just like me and him being able to go out there and being those physical guys, it brings a little extra component to the team that I think we need it on defense. I think our fans would like to hear that. Uh, you kind of alluded to it earlier when you were talking to Mike, but what is it like playing along? guys like Minka, you know, Cam, TJ, Watt, and just being on that defense? Uh, I just like everyone here that you have a role, you know, and when you have a role, then they try their best to put you in, in positions to make you make plays. And I think that for each guy, it's different. So just to really see those guys work on their craft for their, 
for the things they're they're best at, and to really step from afar and then come here and see, okay, they work like this every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the way Mike T had us in training camp every day is like no matter what you're gonna you're gonna iron, you're gonna sharpen that iron. Uh, <clears throat> in a lot of places I've been, I mean, yeah, we've been I've had been on really good teams, but I don't know if the work has been the same. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but yeah, playing along like Minka, like he's one of the most instinctual players I've ever seen. Um, he's really smart. He's a coach on the field, coach in the film film room, like. I don't know if he wants to be a coach when he's done playing football, but he should. He could. He could be head coach, honestly. The way, the way uh, men follow him, you have grown men following you as a leader, the way he does. Um, he said he's at least by example. He barely he doesn't say a lot, but when he says something, everyone everyone shuts up and listens. Whether it's a coach, whether it's a player, so uh, I respect him as a man and, and as a player. Uh, really, and then seeing high Smith because I feel like, like I said earlier, that he's very mm-hmm. underrated. Like I think he's a fantastic. Yeah, I agree. The guy's not. He's not getting the notoriety he should in the league, and I think this year will be that year, God willing, when it comes to uh, everyone staying healthy. That's awesome. Uh, what are the goals of this team? Not even like defense specific, but like what are what are the goals? Just I, obviously to get better each day in each game. But like, do you, do you guys like set goals before the season? Obviously, like win the Super Bowl is the ultimate prize. But just like you know, even like goals for you necessarily that you set for yourself. I would say, like, I mean, you know. What's understood does I'd be explained when it comes to winning Super Bowls and winning games because um, to, to win in this division or well, in this conference, you have to first you have to win at least more than half of your division games to make the playoffs. Yeah. Then, then you then you obviously got to end up being beating Kansas City. That's the team you got to be. That's the team to beat. It's always the team to beat. Mm-hmm. So and Baltimore say, hmm? and Baltimore, yeah, Baltimore, yeah, and Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> anyways <laughs> anyways <laughs> um but yeah it's just kind of expectations i would just say we just want to be able to really play the way we know we can play and then the wins will come with it um mm-hmm. defensively we just here to bring back old old steel football you know well i say we playing great great defensive football for a long time but <clears throat> you know uh the league has changed a lot a lot of a lot of points are being scored uh, I think I read somewhere where if you can keep a team under 17 points, then you should win most get most of your games. Um, so that's that's our goal, and to create a lot of turnovers. You know, we obviously we're Blitzberg, and we want to get sacks mm-hmm. and all that, but that also, we also need turnovers because to, to give our, opportunity, our offense opportunities to score. Uh, we have a new offense, new players; they're all trying to gel. So the best thing, the best thing for us as a team, as any other team, would be to win on your defense until those things get going. What's understood doesn't have to be explained. That's I like that. Is that a Tomlinism? Is that a Elliotism? Have by the way, have you digested like Tomlinisms yet? Oh, like I <laughs> yes. <laughs> you laugh. That's funny. That is actually funny. <laughs> Some good ones. Do, do routine things routinely, guys. Routine things routinely. That's if good Tomlin. If it's pickings, then it's do freakish things routinely. <laughs> So he's a, he's he's a your favorite. I, I that's I had Tariq Hill on my team, and obviously he's the fastest player I've ever seen play football. He's also one of the best players I've ever seen play football. But I have never seen a freak of nature like I've seen when it comes to George Pickens. He's just like a the way he runs his routes is freakish. They're different. The way he catches his, his catch radius. I've never honestly seen a player like him. I've never seen a person like him. This is freaky. Or different he is as a, as a player. He's a freaky as different as a player as a person. Pause. No, no weird stuff. But like in in a way, of just like he's just a different cat. He's a different cat. But like he he's a really cool dude who cares about people. He just goes things about he goes about things his own way. And he's a really funny guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, you guys have the same goal at the end of the day, and you want to win. But we love watching GP play, and you're right. Some of the things he does are absolutely eye-opening and you get to see it firsthand every day yeah. uh, so so that's fun let's transition to to week one what we got coming up in a couple of days the atlanta falcons we always like to preview it a little bit with our our guys and guests this is an explosive offense Deshaun. i don't have to tell you that when you guys are sitting back in the film room with terrell austin and the rest of the defense but what are you focusing on have you ever played against kirk cousins i played against kirk cousins uh twice once in baltimore mm. when i played for the line Lions, yeah. No, actually, twice I played for the Lions. We played them at, I mean, obviously both. I played them three times. Oh, uh, he's a 
he has a big arm, big arm quarterback, um, smart player, takes what you'll get, takes what you'll give him. Um, tries to be as efficient as he can. He's a quarterback that is a game manager, but can take over a game if you give him the opportunity to do so. So, uh, you know, he's coming off injury. We know that for a fact, but we just got to create pressure. You create pressure on any quarterback, you can get some things done. They have a great running back with Bijan, my fellow Texas boy, you know. Um, very elusive, very, very strong, cut on a dime player. Um, they have Drake London, who can get in and out of his cuts pretty well. Um, then they have Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, he can stretch the field at a tight end position. Uh, he can run the whole route tree, obviously, as a tight end. Uh, and then they have Larry McLeod, who's a slot guy, who's a speedy guy, more of a quick screen, uh, end around guy. Um, I want to say they have another receiver. They have uh, Mooney? Mooney. That's Mooney. what I'm looking for. Mooney. He's fast, too. He's, he's, he's fast. They're pretty. He's he's quick. He's he's fast too. He has a pretty good route tree too. He's a pretty good route runner. Um, but I feel like you know we have big physical corners and we can go out yep. there and do the technique that they have been uh, doing our whole career. You know, put them hands on them guys and they can slow them down. Give it, give everybody else a chance to do their job. So you know, I got faith in my corners. No doubt. Go ahead, JY. Yeah, so we always like to, when we bring players on, just get to know you off the field. So I'm just going to ask some rapid-fire questions, real All simple. Right. Uh, so what is your favorite music? It could be a song. It could be a genre, whatever you um, – Outside of football, I don't listen to – I listen to rap during football. If I'm not mm-hmm. playing football, I only listen to R&B. R&B or okay. alternative music because I don't need that feeling of stress and anxiety in my life when I'm not yeah. – what, so what are you going like Usher, Chris yeah. Brown? Oh no, we're going like Brent Fires, says uh, okay. uh Billy Eilish. Nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Okay. Little Sabrina Carpenter. Uh, my favorite, my favorite song, I cannot get this song in my head. Burst of a feather. I, I don't tell you. I say, I say this song every day. I always recite these lyrics every day. I don't know why, but it's stuck in my head. Sabrina's so got like the top three songs on the chart. Mm-hmm. Right she now. does right now. I know. I've never, I've never seen that. But yeah. Travis Scott is trying to un un. Uh, get uh, bring her down. Seat her? We his, can't let that happen. Old, with his old album that he had, he brought back. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah. apparently, they've been going back and forth to try to stay in the top spot. Yep. <laughs> Favorite food? Have you Ooh. had a permani sandwich yet? I'm not eating that thing. <laughs> I'm good. I've been told. I know you got. You got to try it once. Used to be. They said back in the day it was real permanent. They say now it's it's too watered down. You have to go to the one in the strip. That's the original one. That's the original one now. Yeah, that got like the. And you're down in you like going to the strip, so the bigger one, right? Yeah, that's the original one. That's the one that you have to go to. Wait, don't they put something on the sandwich? Isn't it a cold sandwich? Coleslaw. Yeah. Fries. Oh God. Listen. Capicola. I will try anything twice. I said, but that. I'm not a big coleslaw guy. I love food because I, I mean, I'm, I would say I'm a chef. In my yeah, life. yeah. Uh, what do you? What would you cook up like a pregame meal? I know they probably feed you, but like if you had to, like if it was an off day or something, what are you cooking up for yourself? Well, actually, tonight I'm cooking. I'm cooking. Okay. This um, spicy cream, spicy creamy meat, uh, miso soup with dumplings and like shredded chicken in it, with obviously vegetables and whatnot. But it's pretty good. I kind of, I hope you kind of copied the recipe from Pussy's Garden, but I got Yeah, it. that's a, I like that. Yeah. I've been of, there before. Very good place. Yeah. Uh, good but, good uh, atmosphere, too. It is. Great you ever been there? It reminds me of yeah. New York. Yeah. Yeah. It's, all right. So here, here's a, here's a rapid fire question for you. If you could bring only one item stranded on a desert, what would that item be? Don't tell me a football. Frick, no. <laughs> Machete, a machete. All right. I mean, you taking down like animals or trees or like both. You can use a machete to take down the trees to build you a home. You can true use it to start a fire. You can use it to get animals and fish. You can de- um, de- de- um, scale fish as well. You know, you could uh, split open and, and de gut a. I don't know what's out there. Or else I'm a monkey. I don't know. <laughs> you thought about this before? <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. No, you're right. Something like that. Or the zombie apocalypse. I have all. I've thought about these things a lot. Like I am prepared for all these situations. I'm ready. I know where to go. I know where I should be at to be safe and, and be protective. Thing is, I've been told that I shouldn't think that way because why would you want to survive that situation? You should just want to die. Yeah. But, I don't know. 
bad. No, survival. All right, here, here's a little more upbeat. Funniest teammate. Loudest teammate, Casey. That's the loudest. <laughs> loudest teammate, Casey. He's, he's never quiet. Oh, no. Never quiet is Beanie Bishop because he does not shut up. He does not have an off button. But the loudest, <laughs> Casey. The funniest teammate. Um, dang. Besides myself, I don't know. I got to think. Uh, maybe Cam's for, to be 55. I don't know how old Cam is. Cam's pretty funny for an old person. Did you uh, call him 55? I don't know how I, he's, he's someone, I don't yeah. know. Uh, Cam or yeah, no. Cam cracks a joke every day, like every day. He's not he's not off on jokes, so I probably can. Yeah. All right. And last teammate question. So we've seen that you had a dog. What teammate would you least trust to watch your pet? Mika Fitzpatrick. Really? Yes. Minka does not believe dogs are pets. He believes they're animals. He does not treat them. He does not think they're they're kids. These are my children. He was like, he, he told me he was like, no, your, your dogs are not children. They're animals. So animals belong to be in your backyard. I was like, no, they're not. These are my kids. Is he a so, cat guy? He is a non-animal person. <laughs> Minka is very black and white. It's it's. I told you he's no. If if you didn't know Minka from afar. You would think he might be a robot, but he's not. He's, he has a lot of personality. He has a lot of feelings, but you would think he's a robot from the thought process of the black and white. He's funny. He's, he's, he's a, a great coach. So like a robot. I told you he would be a great coach, a great GM too. You know, one day he might quote, quote me now in 30 years, GM of the Steelers. Wow. I love that. Patrick Queen is a good oh, GM. He signed you. Patrick huh? Queen signed you basically. So he's pretty good GM <laughs> yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. PQ, actually, yeah, PQ would be a pretty good GM, I guess, as well. I, don't know, I, I think he's good at Madden, so yeah, I would say so. He knows X's and O's. He might be a good head coach instead of a GM, PQ. Yeah, I'll, I'll treat him as a head coach and make Minka the uh, GM. There you go. And then we gotta have a <laughs> building for the coach, future. So that's you. Or mm -hmm. what do you hey, gotta be on that? You gotta be there too. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, DB's coach at least, or yeah. head, or yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Or, or uh, no, what? I'll, I'll be GM. head of uh, football operations. <laughs> there you go. Or owner. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I, I do not want to be a coach. I refuse. Those <laughs> hours are great. <laughs> hey, Deshaun, it's been great. Uh, we're going to be doing rocking and rolling all season. Uh, yeah. So good luck on Sunday. Mike, you have anything to add? To add? Man, I always end it with the same thing. Stay healthy, man. All right. God bless you. Yeah. Appreciate all you, right. man. We'll Appreciate see you, you. soon. So. Enjoy the miso soup. Get it. Oh, yeah. We go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let it, yeah, let us Deshaun. know. Next episode, we're going to – yeah, we might have Cooking to have a segment. Deshaun. I'm telling next, you, one of these – Next episode, I'll, I'll, like, um, put the end of the food into the into the show. Okay. Like, yeah. You got to yeah, come up with, like, a that. signature, too, like a BAM or something. Like, you got to – Yeah, like could, I got you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's your homework. Oh, yeah, bet. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate you. Good luck. All right. I'll see you next week. Peace. Yep. Yeah, man, that was a great time uh, chopping it up with uh, Deshaun Elliott. I listen. I, I love introducing Steelers to the world like this. I feel like last year we helped a lot with Jalen Warren. Not that we deserve any credit for anything that they are doing, but you know, you had a guy in Jalen who relatively understated, didn't carve out a huge role for himself his first year. But before you know it, you know, you get to know him, you see him playing all the time, and you're like, love this dude. That I mean, it's really easy to, to you know fall in love with Deshaun Elliott um, but when you when you hang out with him, and then each time anybody watches this, you know, sees him on the field, they're gonna they're gonna uh, you know relate back to something he just said, which is really cool, and we're fortunate to be able to do that with with a good dude and a really good football player. You can't you can't uh, you know underestimate that. Yeah, it's just exciting stuff, and uh, just his stories. You could just tell he's just a really, really good dude, so really happy that uh, we'll be talking with him this season and breaking down all things Steelers. But, yeah, make sure you subscribe. We're going to be doing some giveaways, uh, just putting out as much content as possible, keeping you guys informed. What yes, do you sir. say, Mike? Yep, let's, uh, let's go Steelers. We'll see what happens. All right, here we go. Let's get it. Sammy. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time.
Follow the sick podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.